explain how you came into the UK and why? I came in to UK, England, uh, 1966, uh, June if I can remember correctly. I came because my f dad was already here. He uh, came in the late 50s. Um, so I used to sort of join him as a family with my mum and my brother um, and, me and a sister. Um, why, of course, is to join the family to do a new life with my dad. Right, being an 11 year old. Um, when first time on a plane, um, I don't remember much, uh, but uh, I do remember that uh, there was another family with us, and we sort of got talking, and we, th we gave us an address, and we I thought, oh, it's a couple of doors away from me, so we'll see him again, not knowing the, how big the <laughs> black bun is, and it's a different area. So the journey itself wasn't, uh, you know, I can't know much of that, but as soon as I got uh, into England. It was 1966, and of course, June, 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 I think it was, and the World Cup was at the uh, peak. Uh, everybody was happy, and you know, you, you can come to a, a place like that at that time. Um, so, um, yeah, I, uh, I found it as soon as I hit, uh, came into Blackburn. Like I say, it was, it was very, you know, buoyant and joyful, and everybody was. Happy with the World Cup, England doing so well. Not, not that I knew what was going on, but, you know, uh, that was the first test football I've seen. But it really got me uh, because uh, my dad uh, and all his friends and his uh, my uncle, and you know, so they were all sort of enrolling all this uh, Ethiopia about, you know, the, the excitement about um, uh, the football. Uh, so, yeah, uh, my. Ambitions. Um, I would say just just to educate myself well and you know uh, try and make a decent living out of myself. My dad was a teacher, uh, used to be a teacher in India, so I think his his one sort of idea was to, was to you know educate us all and make us you know uh, go further uh, and become something in life. You know, uh, so that that. That was the ambition. You, at that age, you don't really think about, especially coming from India. You know, you don't really think. But then, once you go into a secondary school and whatever, you know, that's when you try and try and understand your, your career and what you, what you need to do. The conditions, um, if you can imagine, um, uh, it's factory, the floor is the factory floor itself was absolutely jump like with people and machines and, um, and there were as you walk in to the factory there's a lot of corridor where we have to clock in and clock out all the all the, all the uh, clocks and everything was there then you walk into the mill itself um, if I can remember um, they were showing machines with ladies doing the slipper bits of, of the original um, uppers and what have you. And then as you walk along, you come to the main part where the slippers are being made. Um, you can see uh, nearby you trails of um, a conveyor belt going with trays of slippers, empty ones and full ones. Uh, then you go to your machines itself. Um, it was pretty jam-packed to be honest with you, you know, you, you could, I don't think there's any room for anybody to just sort of uh, have a meeting along the corridor, you know, so it's that, uh, um, and the, the place itself was sort of, um, uh, what do you call it, cluttered and what have you, um, and also the smell of the plastic, because it was, the machines were plastic molding machines, so the plastic would go in, get hot up and then It'll make it into a slipper and what have you. So you did get the constant smell of this plastic coming out. Um, and like I say, it was it was like every corner there was some sort of station where somebody was working, uh, you know, uh, doing something. Um, I don't I don't think nowadays you'd probably get away with 
what we went on, you know, uh, health and safety wise. Um, pay wise, um, I, I was told by my mates and all that we were well paid. You know, uh, we were on what they call peace work, which is well as a labourer I got, I got a, uh, a standard rate. But when I once once I went on to the machines itself uh, after the year or so, it was peace work. So whatever you make, you got paid for that, which was good in a way because you could be toiling away, you know, uh, eight nine hours and you get the same rate. But this, this way, you can, it's up to you to do as much as you can and you get paid, you know. So I was told by most of my people, most of the friends I knew who used to work in other mills that we were fairly well paid. So. I worked um, at a mill called uh, Finnegan and Blackman. Uh, which is based on Walter Street. Uh, which is, the building's still there, but it's something different now. Um, I started off as a labourer. Um, I did that for about a year and a half. Uh, and then I was put on what they call injection moulding machine that makes slippers. Uh, there was a crew of three of us. Um, the main person operating the machine itself. He, he was the head and then we'll have one sort of tying the strings onto a shoe thing uh, and then the second one, sorry, the second one will come and uh, it, well it's, it's on a sort of round machine that goes around. Uh, the second one would make sure everything's tied and then put a little of uh, glue on it and then it goes to the main one and goes into a, a sort of a molding thing, plastic, uh, and the, you can imagine the smell when the plastic is going in and it, it sort of burns it, sticks it, and then it comes out again and the guy who's doing the first job of stringing the, the slipper itself has to take the slipper off and put it in a tray and so it goes around uh, each time and then it's a tray of a dozen you have to do it. And you can imagine uh, it used to be very, very painful on your hands. It used to be because you pull into strings, uh, and at times you did get some sort of a cover on the thing, right? But because it was hard to pull the string, sometimes we just used to use tape and whatever. Yeah. Uh, and you can imagine. And I've had, um, I can remember a few times having second layers of string, uh, skin on, on on your fingers, you know, because uh, every day you're pulling it, and, you know, at night time could be. But uh, and I was glad when I got moved to this second uh, position, second uh, sort of role, uh, because it's, it's less, you know, <laughs> I didn't do much of that. But again, um, yeah, it was uh, it was hard work. It was hard work because you're still there, more or less, all the time. Um, we did get a break now and then, uh, but uh, it, was, it was a good crew of three. We had a crew of three, and it's always, always sort of. Uh, Get along well, you know. It was, it was a fairly French friendly yeah, atmosphere. Nineteen sixties. Well, it was foggy and smog. <laughs> smog. Um, there was chimneys all over the place, so you know you can imagine. Uh, uh, it was. You, you can you can be you can say that it was more of a friendly place, you know. You can leave the front door open and they wouldn't bother about you know being burgled or being harassed by anybody or you know. So in one sense, we're very it was a it was a close community. Like um, you know, we knew each other. We knew the next door neighbour. Uh, we used to live when I, when we first moved here. When I first came to England, we used to live next to a pub, but we. Never encountered any sort of, you know, harassment or bad behaviour from, from from the pub users, whatever. Um, and we've, I think, we got along fairly well with the with the other communities down and other people around the, around the uh, area where I lived. Seventies, um, uh, late seventies, mid seventies, probably started getting a bit of racial tension. Um, with one thing and another, you know. Um, so it did get a bit, uh, I wouldn't say 
frightening, but I would just say it, it did create a lot of tension between uh, certain communities. Uh, but again, um, it was, I found it more or less more, more friendly. I could go out and the mum and dad wouldn't worry about me coming back late and whatever. Um, but as, it, as the years went on, I think it did get a bit, you know, we had to be sort of careful where we went and uh, what time we sort of went out. Um, I can remember going to cinemas um, with my friends uh, and at times we did get harassed. I remember going to Ewood Park to watch football match and we did get harassed, not by the opposition team supporters, but the, the supporters of Blackburn Rovers itself, you know. So we did, but um, you know, and how I found it now, uh, it's well, it's more modern, isn't it? It's more, you know, uh, you, you can go around anywhere uh, easily. Um, 